Hi guys and welcome. Well, we'll do it again. Sorry. What am I saying? That's fine. Um, some fucking risottos, man. I'm glad I'm not stoned right now. What, really? Fuck, I'm serious. I think that- Are you okay? Episode two, season two. So we got to do two shots. I mean, we did two shots last time. Yeah. That's because it was season two and also booze. Yeah. Um, so if you live in Canada or maybe even if you live in the US, if you go by the counter at the BC liquor store, you find these little guys. A little espresso vodkas. I almost always pick one of these up when I'm leaving the store, um, and they're fucking delicious. So we got double espresso for Claire. Yeah, I love my coffee. And I got just regular espresso for me. You could make an espresso martini, but we're not that fancy. I mean, we were just gonna chug it right out of the bottle, but then it gets a weird glug, and it's not really fun to drink like that. <laughs> All right, cheers. cheers. Spirit Crusher, let's do this. Okay. All right, number two. Cheers. Cheers. Chum to rum. <laughs> Sorry. Love me some chum to rum. Oh, sick. <laughs> well, let's fucking go, guys. So we're gonna continue on our video game theme and do a mushroom risotto. And this one was inspired by Breath of the Wild, which is the, one of the newer Zelda games, which I fucking love because it's so much fun, open world. It's the best. It's my favorite Zelda game. Uh, Cooking is a huge component of the game and mushroom risotto is one of the heartier recipes. And risotto is something that a lot of people are intimidated to make. So I'm gonna show you that it's really not that scary and it's so delicious. It's gonna blow your goddamn mind. What the? Are you gonna need? All right, so we're gonna do one cup of arboreal rice. It's risotto rice. You can find it anywhere, pretty much. Um, and that'll make about four servings, four smaller servings. I don't know, usually serving sizes, I divide by two for me, because I eat a lot. So we're just gonna make one cup of risotto. Uh, and for one cup of arboreal rice, it's usually a three to one ratio. So I've got three cups of chicken broth here, but I'm also gonna add a cup of uh, homogenized milk to this because you sometimes need more liquid and also having a little bit of dairy in there is nice for creaminess. For the mushrooms, you can use dry or fresh. I'm using sh dried chanterelles that I've reconstituted in hot water. Um, chanterelles are really nice, portobellos are a really nice mushroom to use, but really whatever you have access to. Um, dried mushrooms are probably easier to find everywhere. Um, all right, and then um, we're gonna use some fresh basil and parsley for garnish and also for cooking the mushrooms in. Um, I got some cheese here, however much you want. I use, I'm using Asiago, you can use Parmesan. Anything that's like a little bit sharp and dry is usually good, but you can use whatever you want. I don't care if you use yellow cheddar. Um, then we're gonna use some garlic and shallots. This is at your discretion, you can use however much you want. I put a ton of garlic in everything I cook, but I know some people are sensitive. Um, I got a pat of butter that's also very optional, but I just stir this in at the end because it's um, what butter. else? We've got all the butter, and then you're also gonna need about a half cup of dry white wine. I got something Italian to stay with the theme. The rest you can drink, which is great. What is a dry white wine? A dry white wine is, I mean, dry just means not sweet, but like Sauvignon Blanc, a Pinot Grigio is usually fine. Um, stay away from things like Gewurztraminers, and then just some olive oil for frying up the rice in to start. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is heat up the stock and the milk. Keep it on minimum. Um, you don't wanna use cold liquid for this. And then heat up some oil in a pan. Maybe a little bit more. And you're gonna toast the rice first. And I'll show you what that means and when you know you're done. All right, so we're gonna add some of these shallots and some garlic to the pan. The rest we're gonna reserve for the mushrooms. We can use most of it right now. Let it go for a little bit. Pretty quickly because you don't want the garlic to burn. Then we're gonna add the rice and we're gonna toast it. 
And you don't want this on too high heat because again, the sugars and the garlic make it burn faster than everything else. And you want to make sure that every grain is coated in oil or whatever fat you're using. Butter is good too, but then you have to be even more careful about it not burning. Then what you're listening for is the rice is going to make a little bit of like a crinkly popping sound. That's when you know it's time to start adding some more liquid. More oil never hurts. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. It would kill me if you used canola in this. You can do whatever the f else you want with this risotto, but please use olive oil or a nice butter. Like if Italian grandmas had YouTube, they're probably, they would probably tell me I'm doing this wrong, but like at least do them justice by using olive oil, please. I'm just gonna keep moving it around and toasting it evenly for about, I don't know, two to three minutes. You want it to become a little bit golden. It just has a much nicer flavor if you toast it. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna hear the rice start to pop a little bit. And as you can see, there's a little bit of browning going on on the rice and the garlic. And the first thing you're gonna add to this is about a half cup of wine. I eyeball this, you can measure it if you want. It's not really a big deal. And then you're gonna stir this until the wine is absorbed. So, the way you make risotto is you're gonna slowly add this hot liquid and let it absorb, so about that much. And then turn it down. This is too high right now, but it'll calm down in a second. And then as it absorbs into the rice, you're just gonna keep on adding one more scoop and one more scoop. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done or when it's close to being done, so you know. But uh, I mean, you can take a scoop of the rice out and test it. It should be a little bit al dente, which means there should be some texture to the rice when you bite into it, but obviously not to the point where it's not edible and weird. So I'm gonna stir this for a little bit longer before I add some more liquid. So while the risotto is working, we can start on the mushrooms. So take the rest of the garlic and shallots you have reserved <clears throat> and cook them off for a bit. Again, not on high heat because you don't want to burn them. You just want to sweat them a little bit, make them smell nice. And then pretty quickly add the mushrooms. So the trick with the mushrooms is you don't want to stir them too much because you do want to get some browning on them. So once you put them in initially, give them a stir with the, mush with the garlic and shallots, excuse me, and then just kind of leave them for a bit. These are dried ones too, so they do cook a little bit differently than fresh ones. Um, all mushrooms require quite a bit of fat because they're very absorbent, so you can always add some more. Then you're going to salt them to taste and leave them for a second. I'm gonna show you guys how to chiffonade some basil. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick off some basil leaves and what you're gonna do is take, first start with the biggest one and you're gonna put them kind of in order of size on top of each other and then we're gonna fold it up and we're gonna chiffonade it. All right, so you're gonna fold over the top first and then you're gonna grab the side and you're gonna roll it in pretty tightly. And you're gonna just slice it thin like this. And then what you end up with, <clears throat> once you loosen all these curls, is a nice little chiffonade of basil. You can do it thinner if you want. <clears throat> I like it a little bit chunkier because I like big chunks of basil in mine. If you want to do a proper chiffonade, it's quite thin. All right. And that we'll use in the garnish. So once your mushrooms are done, you can throw a whole 
tasting bunch of herbs on there. And you're just gonna set them aside. And you're gonna finish the risotto with the mushrooms. After a bunch more rounds of adding liquid to this and stirring, this is about what it should look like, but um, you should definitely just keep tasting it and keep trying it until the rice is the texture that you like. For me, I'm calling this done. It takes about, I don't know, 20 minutes. I'm gonna add a pat of butter and my cheese right now. And stir that in. And then I'm gonna add the mushrooms. And the mushroom mixture in. So cheesy, so amazing. All right, now we're ready to serve. So, got one beautiful serving of risotto there. I'm just gonna add some of our chiffonade basil on top. And some parsley. And you're good to eat. Let's go try it. Time to eat. Thank you Clink. so much. Of course. Let's eat this risotto. I <laughs> love risotto. Mm. Straight up though. Mm. That pat of butter. Mm -hmm. Really makes it. Mm. Yeah. The dried mushrooms are a bit chewier than regular mushrooms, but it's so nice with the risotto. Mm. Oh, I love it. Get that mouthfeel. It's all about the mouthfeel. I do feel like if I was venturing in like a forest, mountain wilderness all day long fighting things, this is what I'd want to eat mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Absolutely. This is so hearty and good in my belly. It feels amazing to eat. Cheers. Right. Mushroom risotto. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay for our next episode. <laughs>